I know there's like a long tube and then there's a really long needle. So just <laughs> Don't make it like so bad. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Krista. Welcome to another episode of Find the Facts. A lot of you guys wrote in to me saying you were curious about epidurals. I'm having flashbacks to when I was in labor and had to get one. It was actually wonderful and awesome, but it's really intimidating, which is why a lot of people have so many questions about it. So today we are going to talk to expert Dr. Mary Jane Minkin to get the facts. I'm an obstetrician gynecologist based out of New Haven, Connecticut. Unfortunately, I don't mean to be a bad person. As, as Chris, as you know, I'm a very optimistic person, yeah. but unfortunately labor can be pretty painful and it can hurt a lot. And epidurals are a wonderful thing to help alleviate that pain. What we're doing with an epidural is that we're basically numbing you, taking away the pain afferents, the pain fibers that are coming in towards your, up to your spine and going up to your head without blocking the motor activity, without blocking the contractions in the uterus um, so that you want your uterus to keep on contracting, but you want to block the pain fibers is, is your basic principle. So you'll, you'll numb the back first, right? You put a little bit in exactly like you, like even with an IV, some people just numb the skin so it doesn't hurt as much as you put it in. So you put some numbing medicine into the skin itself. That's exactly correct. And mm. then there's a needle that, mm. how long would you say the needle is? The needle is basically, it's, it's not super long. I mean, I don't want to think we're putting in a needle that's like giant, you know, stuff like that. Basically to, in, to get into this space. Okay. okay. And you put it in very slowly, you know, okay. And you will, what you do is you feel, and I put in epidurals. So yeah. you feel, really do feel this little pop, okay, as you get into the space around the spinal cord. You're not in the spinal cord, you're around, you know, okay. okay. Get into this epidural space. And then once you're in your space there, you basically thread this catheter into the space around the spine. You're not next to the spine, you're around the spinal area. So I want to make sure everybody knows no needle is going to be in your back. We're just leaving the soft catheter in your back. You stick, you stick the catheter in through the needle and then you withdraw the needle over the, over the catheter and then you hook up the anesthesia medicine. And you drip the medicine as needed. Exactly. Are people usually laying down or are they sitting up? Either one is fine. There are pros and cons to both. If you're sitting, you're going to be sort of sitting forward, sort of like hugging your knees sort of thing and arching your back out, okay, is what you're doing. Again, you want to open that space in your back to guide that, that needle and then the catheter through it. If you're lying on your side, that you'll sort of roll over like a, like a shrimp sort of pose. The whole process, start to finish, how many minutes would that take if you're going to give an epidural? It depends. It depends. I mean, I have seen epidurals go in in a matter of three or four minutes, but it usually takes longer than that. The problem is going to be more than three or four minutes and less than 15. How many points down would you say that pain drops? Well, it went probably from eight or nine, you know, to like one. <laughs> like one. So really, they really essentially can't really feel anything. Pressure. They just feel pressure, but no pain. Won't hurt. Won't hurt. Mm -hmm. How long can they expect it? Like, because I know you can't stand up right away, right? Right. Like wear it off. immediately. How long is it going to take? Half hour, hour, depending on how late you were. You're not going to be out for days. Don't worry. If you were to get a C-section, are they doing the epidural there too, or is that a different type of like anesthesia? If you're in labor, you know, okay, and you have an epidural and you need a section, you know, you stop dilating or something like that. That the epi the, uh, procedure can be done under the epidural. We don't need another anesthetic. You know, usually the epidural will work. If somebody's just coming in and scheduled a cesarean section, let's say she has a breech baby or something like that, and she's not going to be in labor at all, um, oftentimes we'll go directly to a spinal anesthetic, which actually works a little more quickly for folks um, and probably gives them a little, what we call a denser block. We give them more pain relief in their belly. Probably the major medical complication we see with an epidural is blood pressure falling a bit. Okay, so one of the things we usually do when somebody's going to be getting an epidural is we always have an intravenous going. And we usually will, as the phrase is, we will tank her up with some extra fluid to try to minimize her chances of having her blood pressure go down. You can get some discomfort from placement. And, you know, and occasionally, for example, if somebody um, had an unsuccessful epidural, you know, it wasn't placed properly, the patient didn't get numb, you may have to redo it. You know, I've seen that happen a couple of times, of course. Um, and somebody might have some more discomfort from the back pain, you know, being there. The incidence of paralysis is extraordinarily rare. 
I mean, extraordinarily rare. I've never seen a case, never heard of a case, to be honest, but it could happen, but it's very rare. But the major thing is if you do get into the space directly next to the spinal cord, you know, okay, you might unfortunately develop a leak of some of that fluid, you know, okay, and if there's a leak of some of that fluid, you could get a headache. Okay, that's the major, major complication that we do see occasionally of, of an epidural. One of the things that drives me crazy, absolutely crazy, you know, okay, is uh, some people put on their birth plans, you will not offer me anesthesia. And I'm like, no, I ain't signing off on that. When I became a doctor, it was to stop suffering. And, you know, everybody has a perfect right to say, no, absolutely, I don't want anesthesia. And that's fine. That's somebody's prerogative. But I, as a physician, will never agree. And I'm recording this. I will never agree to not offer pain medicine. Alrighty, and that is everything you need to know about epidurals. Again, if there is anything that you're curious about, any topic that you want more information about, message me at Call Me Krista Torres, and I will do my best to find a reputable expert who can give us the answers.